What does trance music mean to you? Uh, well, I think it's more of a simply a unifying factor on the dance floor. I can go down the BPM uh, philosophies as to if it's is it trance, if it's not 132. And I know I used to fly that flag quite often, but um, as I've gotten older, I've kind of seen, oh, this is trance, and like this would be trance, and something that's 126 or something like that. Um, it's more about the unifying factor and the emotions that are conveyed on the dance floor. Now you could say, okay, yeah, the teeny boppers are getting those same emotions at a Justin Timberlake concert, but no, it's not the same. They're just screaming their faces off and not really doing anything. But in trance, at least the way I envision it and the way I always fantasize about how trance unfolds onto a dance floor, it, there is this unifying factor, this, let's say, X factor that is happening on the dance floor amongst everybody, whether it's 50 people or 50,000 people, and you have this vibe that is very hard to duplicate in other styles. Other styles have their own kind of feel on the dance floor, each um, and they're all each enjoyable in their own right. But trance, I believe it's the emotionally unifying factor. Um, and of course, you know, I, I prefer trance that drives forward. So I guess if I had to define my own style of trance, I want dr trance that is really driving, really pushing, uh, commands your attention and in your face. So that would be my definition. The world is about to end and you are organizing the last ever party. Which DJs would you book to play? Um, I would easily book the seven of course we always have a great time and the people seem to like these seven events and i miss them intently intensely uh but if i had to book more djs um definitely pvd but i would challenge him i would say paul you have to outdo your 2003 energy set and that would be hope and hopefully he would accept the challenge and totally obliterate that set. That's not an easy challenge, by the way. And then if I had to round it out a little bit, I would love to see Moby get up there and perform. He always does an amazing job. It's not necessarily trance, but it you'll hear, like especially if he plays his older stuff, a lot of seeds that were planted to give trance a lot of ideas in the later years. Of course, then I would go with Prodigy, Eric Pridge, Prids. Um, and if I had to round it out with a couple drum and bass names, I guess Mephius, and Matrix and Future Bound and Metric. What is my greatest fear? I think my greatest fear is potentially just simply failing. Um, failing at something that, you know, okay, so I guess my, I guess my major drawback in my, in my personality is that I tend to procrastinate the things that I think I'm going to fail at or that I might not be good at. So I'll put them off and put them off until I face them and do it. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I mean, for example, live streaming during this whole Corona time, I was putting that off and putting it off. I'm like, no, I'm not going to be good. And then I tried it once and it was like amazing. I loved it. So, and then I just got more into it. And it, it's, it's all about just doing what you say you're going to do. Um, but, you know, of course, that fear of failing is always there with me. Um, and that's, yeah, that would be my greatest fear. What is my earliest memory? Whew. I actually don't know. Um, I know. Um, I guess it was when my brother Ryan was born. I was the firstborn, he was the second. Um, it was at my parents in the hospital when he was born. Uh, I guess I was only, I guess I was like two and a half years old. They gave me a set of roller skates when he was born. And um, yeah, that was me. Um, pretty much a year fresh, probably just over a year fresh walking, strapping roller skates onto my feet to roller skate around a, a hospital in the baby delivery wing. Um, that's just how I remember it. Might not be accurate. I don't know. It's cloudy. Have I ever said, have you ever said, I love you and not meant it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I have. That's an American thing, I think, mostly. I think a lot of people say I love you and not mean it. But the thing is, I think they totally think they mean it at the time. And then looking back, they say, oh, yeah, that wasn't it. I mean, it's a weird dynamic. It's a, it's a very weird dynamic. Your brain works in mysterious ways. You can't really say. I mean, of course, love is a series of electrical impulses that, you know, stay consistent or don't or whatever. So, uh, you know, just like, and also like similar, oh, I'm going way too philosophical. But I guess, you know, similar to people that say, you know, dreams actually mean nothing versus the people that say dreams mean everything. So what is love anyway? So if you feel it, then say it. I mean, 
Yeah, people change their minds all the time. So there's no reason people can change their minds about love. I don't believe that. What do they say? There's like seven perfect matches for your love in your life. That's really, who the hell came up with that number? That's so stupid. Um, you know, you could love anything you want. Um, so, or anything that your body is, or your mind, or your body, or your genitalia is attracted to. Uh, what is my guiltiest pleasure? Oh, I know. Just got some of these for my birthday. Doritos. So unhealthy, but so good. I love these. Very, very unhealthy. And probably my other guilty pleasure lately is drinking loads. I think everybody's guilty of that these days, right? What is my all-time favorite movie? I don't really have just one, I guess. Um, you know what? It might actually be... It might be Forrest Gump. I, I don't know why. That's the, one, the first one that came right into my head. Previously, I've been asked this question. I've said things like Gladiator. I've said things like Braveheart. But you know what? That movie, had Forrest Gump, has drawn me back to it so many times to watch it over and over. And it's an inspirational movie about, you know, you don't have to be an expert in anything in life. You just have to try hard and apply yourself at everything you do and put your heart into everything you do. And things just somehow have a way of working out. And that's an amazing moral that this movie teaches. And yeah, so... Forrest Gump, absolutely. If you could change one thing about the world, what would I change? What would I change about the world? I don't know. Um, I kind of like the world as it is. I don't think it's that bad a place like everybody, you know, wants to say or wants to have us all believe it is. It's not that bad a place now. Um, I'm not going to say, oh, we need world peace. Yeah, you know what? If I would change one thing about the world, I think the the thing... Okay, if we're going to say the world, let's talk about the world as a people, right? And everybody wants to impose their ideas on other people, whether it's religious, whether it's the media, and everybody has their agenda to impose their ideas on other people to get them to believe what they believe. If that could be eliminated, I think the world would be a lot more enjoyable place, a bit more... Um, acceptance from everybody into their own right to an opinion. Now, of course, that's not going to change because of social media and everybody's just choking ideas down everybody else's throats. But ah, you said one thing I could change if I could. So that would be it. What is the most important lesson life has taught you? Kind of goes back to the Forrest Gump thing, um, actually. And I wouldn't I don't want to say the movie taught me that but you, you're taught this all your life, that if you throw yourself into something, you're going to get it back out of it. But you really have to be honest with yourself and objective and know that you are throwing yourself at it. You are committing yourself to something and you will get what you want from it. If you are doing anything half-assed, it will backfire. And then you're going to get jaded and you're going to blame people and you're going to... Uh, it's just human nature. But just know inside to be honest with yourself about what you're doing. If you're actually giving things 110%, and you'll be surprised what actually comes back. In a film about your life, who would play you? I would love to get played by the young Nicolas Cage. That would be kind of cool. Um, I feel like he was kind of similar movements and gestures. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 that's a weird one. Let's go with young Nicolas Cage. Not that he's an old man now, but I think, you know, from back in Honeymoon in Las Vegas, was it Honeymoon in Vegas? Honeymoon in Vegas? That, you know, that Nicolas Cage would be pretty cool. I would want him playing me. You're only allowed one alcoholic drink for the rest of your life. What do I choose? That's easy. A super, super spicy Bloody Mary. And no, not the European way where they just put tomato juice, um, Tabasco sauce, and vodka in it. No, 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 no. Proper spiced up Bloody Mary mix like from America. Like um, Mr. and Mrs. T's is really good. Um, is it Tino's? Well, Tino's is a vodka, isn't it? There's a lot of really good Bloody Mary mixes coming out of the States. I've never really had one that matches that outside, but um, Bloody Marys. If you were an animal, what would you be? I would be a doggy because I love their style. Which track from your back catalog best defines you and your sound? Oh man, there's not really one track that defines me. Any of you that actually, you know, have listened to my Degeneration album and know all the stuff that I've done in the last 16 years, there is definitely no kind of common denominator. However, if I was to pick a track that kind of really, you know, that I put myself completely into, um, I think Now You See is definitely one of my best definitive moments. Um, 
of course, Lyft, you know, everyone always goes Lyft, but I feel that's a bit, um, you know, that's too obvious at this stage. Um, what else? I'm really loving the latest stuff. Like the, the the rhythm was a really for me a really good way to kind of join what I feel was the old Anjuna beat sound. Um, so the rhythm will be kind of also for me very good summary of my sound going forward as well. And also love um, doing tracks with a little bit harder edge, like the unfamiliar that I've just done with Meta and Glide, um, things like that. When did you last cry and why? We let the kids have TV time. We kind of split everybody off, and everybody goes watch the different things, different ages. And last weekend, we actually said, okay, family movie time. And we watched A Dog's Way Home. I believe it's A Dog's Way Home. And uh, yeah, I get really choked up during animal movies. I don't know why. I'm an animal lover. So yeah, there was a couple scenes in there that were a little, little uh, slightly tear-inducing, to be fair. So if you weren't a DJ or producer, what would I be? Homeless. No, no, I'm joking. Um... I guess I would have probably, if I never got into music, I would have kept going with art school and probably either gotten into uh, comic book illustration, um, animation, either for Japanese animation or potentially for video games. That would have been a smart move, actually, in retrospect, um, given the big gaming industry and how that's gone. Or maybe even done, like, you know, more kind of animated. I mean, I'm getting more into the Adobe stuff now in regards to the Twitch stream. So, I mean, I I've always loved visual art. So, something visual art related. Um, but I've done kind of all sites, all sorts of jobs in my life. I've been a pizza delivery guy. I've done IT. I've worked in a video game retailer. Um, I've repaired laptops for Dell. I've done all sorts of odds and end jobs throughout my life. What is your favorite country to travel in? Tough question. It's a three-way tie. And don't be offended if I don't if name your, your country. But definitely, I love, of course, traveling around in my home country, USA. Uh, I, of course, you feel the most comfortable when you're in your home country. So, yeah, when I go visit any of the states, I'm immediately, you know, it's like soul food for my mind, and I'm just immediately in a completely comfortable state. Not that I'm not comfortable here in Switzerland, but you know how it is. You get homesick. I mean, I'm pretty homesick lately because I haven't been back to the States since before this whole epidemic started, and I used to get back almost every two months. So, yeah. Um, the next one up is Argentina, because Argentina is just always a religiously awesome experience, and I use religious in a non-religious way. It is just... From the moment you step off the plane, you feel just the warmth of an amazing people, amazing culture, insane food, insane wine, the most passionate clubbers you could ever see. Um, and yeah, love Argentina. Miss it. Uh, and then, of course, the third, uh, not third place, because it is absolutely a three-way tie, uh, is Australia, another country that I, it's worth every minute of flight there. And... I just, yeah, once again, another country that I'm just implicitly, just categorically comfortable. The moment I step off step off the plane, um, it's always a great trip. Um, I've met so many good friends that I've made over there in Australia. So, yeah, uh, Australia is definitely um, another one of my favorite countries to travel in. Top three trance tracks of all time. Binary Finery, and I believe it's 1999. I know it's, it's originally 1998. 1999, the Guriela mix. I think this mix is really what had really set the stage for a lot of what had to come after it. Uh, next up, um, let's go with Thomas Bronzoir. Um, and this is like this guy. I, I, I probably could have done my top three with just his tracks, but I felt that wasn't fair. Um, if I had to pick one track from Thomas Bronzoir that really summed it up, it's got to be Constellation. I've been playing a, a re. Hash, because of course these tracks, you know, they they, they aged well. But um, you know, I, I did a rehash. I, I do a re I have done a rehash from my streams. So uh, I play a new version of Constellation now, and I'm so happy I did. I'm so happy to have this back in my sets. So Thomas Bronze for our Constellation number two, um, and also this is no particular order. And third one, I might have to go with. It's got to be a PVD tune. So Paul Van Dyke. Um, uh, there is a version that he did of uh, We're Alive that actually doesn't have the vocal in it. And there's like a pluck melody. I don't know which mix it is. There's a ton of mixes of this that he did himself. Um, and it's like a melody. Dun, 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 dun. And it, it, it's just, I remember hearing it and I was just like, this is just unbelievable. Um, just good, emotive kind of 
feel good track and that 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 really really he is a master at um so that would be the third one if i had to throw a fourth in i would might say uh super eight um i think it's super eight and tab alf uh alto no wait no, Alto Rush, the Super 8 and Tab uh, remix. That track is ridiculously timeless to me. Um, absolutely, you know, an evergreen track. What is the one thing coming up in my schedule that I'm the most excited about? The end of coronavirus. No, 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 no. That's too obvious. Everybody's excited about that. I think the most, the thing that I'm the most excited about is I've just agreed with Black Hole uh, to do a second artist album uh, for in, during 2021. So that particular, now I've done already done Degeneration, which was like, you know, covering a lot of musical ground um, and this album is going to be much more dance floor only focused I want every single track to be something I could bust out in a set you know my Degeneration album as fun as it was to make and how diverse the album was I can't play most of those tunes in my DJ sets so the idea behind this album is an immediately usable batch of tracks that I can just throw down in the clubs and that's going to be the concept throughout the whole album you know tracks that every track will be something you could play in a club um, during a trance set you know really catering to my proper core fan base a final message for the dedicated trance fans on the trance portal well i mean thank you for watching my very very long drawn out digressive answers um but i hope you uh, did number one uh definitely join me on my twitch channel uh every wednesday night and saturday morning central european time so it usually makes it um you know, when in America, it would be either Wednesday morning or, or around noon. And uh, for Saturday, it's actually Friday night. But just check on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Sean Tyus Music. For my schedule, you can check that out. Uh, you can watch back some old streams as well. Older streams, it only holds it for two weeks. But anyway, check me out on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Sean Tyus. Um, and yeah, uh, Instagram, Sean Tyus Music.com, uh, Sean Tyus Music. And anyway, thank you everybody that's been supporting me and us throughout the years. And uh, yeah, see you very, very soon. I hope. Take care.